animation can be time consuming and complex, but there is a blueprint that you can just follow to make your life a lot easier. In this video, I will tell you what elements you can put into your animation to make it look good. Ferdinand for Animator Island bringing you tips, tricks, and tutorials to help you become a better animator. Let's animate a simple head turn. The start and end position are our key poses. These key poses are often held for a couple of frames and absolutely required for your audience to understand what action or story is going on. Therefore, they need to be as clear and appealing as possible. So you shouldn't just draw the first thing that comes to your mind. Instead, animators develop these poses by making dozens of small drawings, so-called thumbnails, to find the best version of that pose. Okay, so now that we got the poses nailed down, beginners often animate from key pose to key pose by drawing in-betweens, where each new drawing gradually looks less like the start and more like the end position. The resulting animation gets the job done of transitioning from one pose to the other, but it's very boring and doesn't tell us anything about the motion. It's more like a floaty morph kind of thing than an actual character with volume and physical forces applied to them. What you need to add to improve the quality of your animation immediately are so-called extreme poses. Most of the time, you will need an extreme pose that will give you an anticipation. We will have a detailed look at anticipation later, but for now just keep in mind that most motions need to be prepared by going into the opposite direction first and then go into the direction you actually want to go. So, if you animate a character jumping, the character needs to go down first, coil up, and then jump up. Same for the head turn. Before the head goes to the left, it needs to go to the right first, even if it's just slightly. We can also use anticipation to put in additional information. For example, the head is a lot slower than the eyes are, so the eyes might already, during the anticipation, look into the direction that the head will end up in later. On the other end of the motion, we have something like the opposite of anticipation. Most motions need to be caught by overshooting and then returning to the position that we actually want to end up in. So if a character comes down from a jump, they need to catch that energy by bending their knees and going a little further down, and then they come up to the standing position. For the head turn, we would slightly overshoot the position at the left and then go to the key pose. Now it's a little easier to see what extreme poses are in general. They describe a position right before a leading element changes direction or starts a new motion. So technically, many key poses are also extremes, but extremes don't have to be key poses, because they might not be relevant just for understanding the action. Just with anticipation and overshoot added, our animation looks a lot more physically believable and interesting. But we're not done yet. To get good animation, you need to define how the motion feels during the motion, during the transition. And you can do that, one, with spacing your in-betweens, which we talked about in the previous video, and two, by adding a breakdown. The breakdown is a middle position between keyframes or extremes that defines what goes on during the motion. Does the head dip up or down during our head turn? Does it lean left or right? Do we hold the facial expression from the start or already go to the facial expression from the end? Or do we create an in-between state? Usually, we close our eyes during fast head motions to protect them. That's something that we could put into the breakdown that will make our animation more believable. These are conscious creative decisions that you have to make for every single motion, because they can make a difference. They can make 
your motion feel heavier or lighter. Or you could use the breakdown to reveal some extra information about our character's personality. For example, this breakdown would make our character seem a bit arrogant, and this one would make him seem curious and happy. Unlike key poses, breakdowns are not held, so your audience feels them, but they couldn't describe them because they go by too fast. Often, you might also have to add a breakdown before an anticipation or overshoot to define how exactly it gets from the key pose to the extreme. This is very important, especially for big anticipations and overshoots. In our case, in this head turn, uh, the anticipation and the overshoot is so small that we don't need it. If we flip through the drawings that we have so far, you can see that this is already starting to look really good, although we only have a couple of frames drawn so far. If you would take just these few frames and distribute them on a timeline, you would already get a decent looking animation that you could put on Newgrounds or YouTube to create your own animation series or short film. Of course, it's a very snappy animation style, but it already works, it already looks interesting. By the way, you would use the same set of positions when you animate more abstract things, like a text animation or a morph. Isn't that amazing how good it looks if you just have a starting key pose, an anticipation, a breakdown, an overshoot, and the ending position. Just with these five elements, you can create amazing animation. If you want to learn more, you could watch our next free lesson where we will dive deeper into animation physics and the patterns of motions that you will need again and again. However, if you want to get to a professional skill level even quicker and you want to practice everything you just learned about in a really fun way, please consider purchasing the premium lesson for this topic. There, we will have a look at different ways to morph in animation and I will walk you through the creation of this crazy morphing animation step by step in OpenTunes. The premium lessons will help you to form the habits and the way of thinking you need to create high quality animation quickly and efficiently. Your purchase also helps me to create more free lessons and content for everyone. So if you like the kind of stuff that we put out on animatorisland.com and on our YouTube channel and you would like me to do more of that, this is the perfect way to support us. You can either get that one premium lesson individually or you could purchase our 2D animation class pass, which will give you access to every premium lesson once it's released, our members only Facebook group and exclusive live streams where you can ask your animation questions and get feedback on your work. Thank you so very much for watching. I'd feel honored if you decide to learn animation through my class and as always, keep on animating.